Alright, so I got a mixture of earth brown and my uh, flat black acrylic going now. And uh, for this particular kick up spray, I'm going to do more over an earth brown with just a hint of black in it. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of blotch it on there. And you want to kind of dry brush this. You don't want it to be super concentrated. Uh, but I'm just going to start applying this, as you can see. And really take your time with this because this is where the details matter. So you just want to go and add this. Nice, silly. Build it up in layers. Don't just apply it and try to force it all on there at once because it's just not going to look right doing it that way. But just travel down the bottom of this car here. Remember, the kick up, like I showed you in the photos, is uh, pretty large. It really covers a majority of the bottom of the car, so it uh, you really need to spread this out. I'm going to get up here a little bit and just kind of start fanning it out a little bit. Got the other side here, too. And basically what we're going to do, once we get all the wet acrylic and all this, all the wet paint is applied, then we'll come back with the chalks and we'll do all this later. But uh, for now we're just going to keep working. Uh, get a little bit on this coupler box here, obviously. Get this nice and dirty. Okay, so as you can see at this point, I've gotten most of the underbody covered with the acrylic paints. And basically it's just like a, mostly the kick-up spray and then just the grime coat and all that. Uh, I also worked my way up onto the coupler pockets and then slowly started to work my way at the ends here as you can see. So the ends have a nice good grime coating on them and I've just started the kick up on the ends with the, just, just basically the spray halo at the very bottom. I've kind of worked it up on the handrails a little bit. And then on this end about the, pretty much the same. I haven't touched the couplers yet though. We'll get, to, we'll get to those in a minute. But uh, you can see I also hit the corner sills here on uh, all sides there. So, at this point, what we're going to do, um, because for the next step, I'm going to put the chalk pestles and the powders on the bottom here, and then we'll screw the trucks back on and we'll do the truck. So, I'll go ahead and start uh, kind of roughing in the chalks here. And what we have, obviously, is my pestles, which I've had for quite a while. And I'm just going to get a good bit of kind of this reddish earth colored chalk pestle color here. And this is what I'm going to use kind of start blending this out and we're just going to really coat the entire underbody with this chalk color and I'm only again going to show you a portion of this because I only need to show you a little bit for you to really get the general idea here but this is basically what I'll be doing for the entire underbody is coating it with the uh, chalks and just you can see it's, you're not getting too crazy with it you're just working it in and the thing about the chalks is that uh, it once you put the dull coat finish on these really really uh, really dig in as you can see okay so now that we got the underbody weathering done with all the chalk pistols and all the wet paints and stuff uh, we're gonna go ahead and install the trucks back onto the model for the weathering process and it's just simply a matter of screwing them back on obviously Okay, so just like my standard truck weathering on pretty much all of my other videos, we're just going to be using the straight earth brown and black mixture on my uh, stiff bristle camel hair brush. And I've already mixed this together, so we can pretty much just take it and apply it to the trucks like this. And you can see what a world of difference this makes when you have a dull coat finish on these trucks because it gives the paint something to grip to uh, with that acrylic being there, or with that uh, uh, dull coat being there makes the world of difference. So I'm going to do this obviously on both sides of the trucks and for each truck but while we're here I'm just going to go ahead and set this brush down and I'm going to take my smaller brush here and we're going to add the paint to the inside of these wheel faces. A uh, very important part here is to paint the wheel faces obviously you don't want to leave these shiny metal but I just take it and just add it to the inside. Now I know it's a bright color right now but once it dries it usually flattens out a little bit uh, so it works, it really works very well for representing the color uh, of the wheel faces. But you can see you just work it in nice, nicely like this. Get a little more paint here and do this one. And just work it in. Just be patient again, as always, and just work it in gently. Just kind of blotch it in. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of sort of blotching it in. I'm not taking the brush and putting it in there like I see some people do and turning it like this because what I find is that leaves little lines where you can see the brush track. You really want to blotch it in because it really in reality and in real life 
the grime in there is layer upon layer of basically rust and grime, grease, etc. And that's how you kind of want to build it up. Uh, you're basically to do that and to make it look accurate. You just want to take and blotch it in like that. So now that I got those wheel faces painted, it's important to remember to also get the bottom or the inner wheel face as well because a lot of modelers miss this I noticed and it's, it's really important to get these because if you leave these blank you will be able to see these and it'll show up as shiny metal and you don't want that so you need to coat both faces of the wheel for each wheel again be patient just do this and like I said the it really 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 helps to sweat the details here and get everything coated trust me so we're just going to work paint into the wheels like this, you can see. And then I'll go ahead and do the other one. And like I said, I'm going to obviously do this for uh, pretty much all these procedures for each uh, face of the truck, each wheel, etc. And then I'll sh uh, in a minute I'll show you guys how to do the axle. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all this up and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so now that I got all the wheel faces and tread and everything painted, I'm going to go ahead and start doing the axles. And with the axles, like I said, this is a little bit more challenging because you have to cover the shiny metal, so it might take one or two coats of paint to do this. Uh, I'm going to try to cover this as best as possible, but like I said, it, it's pretty basic. You just want to cover this uh, and eliminate that shiny metal by painting the entire axle. So get a good bit of paint on your, on your brush here. And like I said, again, pretty much a, a mixture of earth brown and black, and then just coat the axle by taking the brush and spinning it around like this. Like I said, I'll have to go back over these again after this coat dries and add some more paint. Uh, I'm also going to do the uh, this part of the uh, truck here as well. Alright, so as you can see the wheels are coming along quite nicely but before we do any acrylic or I mean, excuse me, any uh, powder or chalk weathering to these, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the uh, the flanges of the wheels themselves because these stay pretty clean in real life uh, because these are usually coming in contact uh, obviously with um, oh, excuse me uh, I had to excuse me guys uh, I just got over a cold them it's kinda hard for me to talk without sniffling a little bit but uh, usually these areas on the on the flanges of the wheels uh, come in contact with uh, like cross rough crossings and they also hit the retarders in uh, rail yards when they get humped so it's important to keep these uh, relatively clean. Also, we want to eliminate all the paint that's on the this part of the wheel itself that's coming in contact with the rail. So, like I said, I have a wet Q-tip here, and I'm just going to go around each one of these wheels. I'm going to clean the bottom of the wheel. Like I said, be thorough here because you don't want any of this gunk getting on your rails. It'll really make a mess, and then it can get in the, on the wheels of your locomotive, which is a not necessarily a good thing. And then we'll hit the uh, uh, these areas here. I'm going to start working on the couplers here a bit to get these covered in paint. We'll uh, later on add some uh, chalk pestles or the, the powder to these again to kind of enhance them a little bit. Sorry about that. And this is again some uh, earth brown and black mixed together to do this. But you just want to cover all the areas of uh, the coupler. Uh, be careful not to bust these springs off though because these will pop off if you're not careful. Uh, you just want to be careful when working around them but you also want to get those covered obviously to eliminate and uh, cover that shiny metal. So I'm going to obviously do this for both couplers. Get a little bit up on this uh, platform here too. Okay so now that the majority of the underbody is coated with the weathering and all that uh, what we're going to do now is focus on the top of this car here. If you remember from the prototype photos, this car has an orangish fade. And I'll actually for a moment bring in uh, a f another car here. And this is one I did. This is an earlier car. But we're going to basically try to create this uh, halo effect here. Of the grime on the top, then the clean underbody, or the clean sides here, and then the dirty underbody. You can see the, what I call the three layers. This is what we're going to try to recreate here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a fir the first layer of this basically is going to be some AIM products weathering powder here. And this is a basically um, a medium rust. Uh, it works pretty well. You can use a dark rust too or a light rust. Either way it's going to work. Um, and then you're just going to subsequently follow behind with your uh, artist pastels and we'll add a little more color to this. But to go ahead and start I'm going to use my uh, 
brush here for my uh, powder effects and it's good to have this cap standing by too and I'll show you why when you use this brush it'll usually pick up quite a bit of the powder as you can see you don't want to apply all of that all at the same time to your model you don't want it to be too dark of a coat you kind of want to work this in layers so it's good to kind of take it uh, and kind of brush it into this cap here so you can collect the powder as you need it so what we're going to do is get rid of the majority of it out of the brush and then we're going to come at the top here and we're just going to start kind of brushing it on like this kind of working it just at the top for the first part and we're just going to kind of start fanning it out we'll blend this all together here in a second but as you can see you're, you're just kind of trying to blend this out for the first part and now that you got that going then you can kind of start fanning it out like this by going in a circular motion and I, I find that the circular motion itself really works the best to kind of blend this out because you want this to blend really nicely. You don't want to see these lines. You need to get rid of these. So you're just going to kind of work it down like this. Do you see that? But right away that makes a world of difference. And then this thing really starts to come to life. Like I said, this is the most important part. So you really want to really work this in well to make this look good. You really want this to look good overall. So, I'm just going to keep working it in. I'm going to start kind of brushing it down now. As you can see, just kind of starting to work it. Kind of work it down these lines, too. You can see, just keep working it down in the fan pattern. Until it kind of fades out towards the bottom, like I said. Just get all this covered up. Work it into these areas here. Get this all covered up, remember. something about like this. Basically this is what we're going to be doing to the entire model though. And then I'm going to do it on this part and then we'll work on this side as well. So I'll come back in a few minutes to show you the results. So as you can see this is what we're going for here and you can see this nice rusty earthy tone. Just like the real thing. So we, and it's, it's all in the blending too. Remember a little of this powder goes a long way. You don't want to use too much of it. The majority of the magic happens in the blending and like I said I, want, I, like to, I like to use a circular motion when blending this out because it really works well uh, to represent this so now that we've gotten the majority of the sides covered it's time to work on the ends here a little bit I'm actually going to adjust the tripod and get this a little lower excuse me for a moment guys okay so if we look at the ends here now what we're going to be doing basically is taking some more of the powder and we're going to be working it onto the ends now so again, I'm going to take a little bit off, I'm just going to start working from the top and working my way down. Put the majority of the powder at the top, like this, and then kind of empty your brush a little bit on a scrap piece of paper, and now you can blend it. Fix it. Blend it. This is where the magic happens. Really work it into that paint. Just blend it, like this. Alright, so now I'm going to take the weathering at the top of this car just a step further and I'm going to take a little bit of my earth colored chalk here I'm going to take it at the top and start working it in. And this will just add sort of an additional layer of grime just to the very top of this car here. Alright, so I'm now going to start to kind of switch gears here a little bit. Um, I'm, all, I'm going to try to do the rust streaks at the top of the hatch around the hatches here I'm going to streak it down the sides of the car here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my straight earth brown acrylic paint I'm just going to kind of start adding some of these streaks in just you can see very 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 gently sorry about that it might help to have a, a hand on the car at the same time while you're doing this but, uh, you just start kind of streaking it down just a little bit just like this. And this is another one of these uh, steps, of, following steps of the car uh, where patience is important here. Because it takes a while to get this to look right, but you just really got to take your time with it to get it to look right. Alright, so now I'm going to kind of start adding a few little rust spots here and there. Just kind of around the hatch here. Let's add some variety. 
and you can really uh, go as heavy as you want with these. Uh, it's good to refer to the photos, of course, but if you remember in the photo I pointed out some rust spots on the tank body itself, and I'm just going to try to add those here real quick. Well, we still got the uh, fine tip brush out. I'll also add a few around the hatch here once we get up there. I'll show a few, but uh, for the majority I'll, I'll try to save time and uh, do all that kind of off camera here. Now what I'm going to do is kind of wet my brush in a bowl of water here to kind of create a wash that I can go back and sort of streak these rust spots down with like this. You can see. Just like this. Very, very effective though. Very effective way of making these rust spots. Like I said, take your time. Alrighty. So now I'm going to kind of start work or start working in the rest around the top of the hatch here just around this uh, particularly underneath the walkways is where the rust accumulates so that's what I'm going to try to go for here clean my brush off real quick and then once again start working in the rust spots like so just at the top there a little bit going around there. Remember this is a high traffic area so this is where a majority of the grime, the rust and everything is going to be. So it's really important that you hit these areas up very well. Just be very thorough and be patient and take your time with this. And even get a little bit up on these handrails here. Represents some chipping paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys some of this all the various work done to the top here, the rust spots, and how good these look. Especially around the hatches, you can see those rust streaks, all the spots. So this car's really, really coming along well. So at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the trucks again. We'll start adding some more powders. We'll do up the couplers a little bit, and then we can, and then we can go back, remove this tape, add the safety stripes and we'll finish up this car. Alright, so what I have here is a little bit of my uh, rust colored chalk tone here and I'm just going to kind of work it into the springs here just a little bit. And then once I work it in I'm going to grab actually a fan brush here this guy right here and I'm going to just kind of fan it out just a little bit kind of spread it around a little bit just like that so you can see it's a little more subtle and now I'm going to take a micro brush and in that same rust color I'm going to hit these bearing caps in rust. I'm just going to go around them like this I'm basically going to do this for each truck uh, I'm not going to do all the bearing caps with the rust, I'm only going to do a few to look like ones that might have recently been replaced so something about like this you can see, and once again, we're going to fall behind and dust these, just like this. I'm going to remove the tip, uh, just a little bit off there. But something like that, you can see, looks pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and weather the couplers here. And I'm using my uh, rust colored chalk again. And I'm just going to hit the top of the coupler. Preferably, it's best to hit the coupler from the top and then spread the chalks downward. You don't really need too much of this because like I said a little goes a long way. You're just trying to highlight some of these details to make it look like kind of a fresh rust build up on this coupler. So you can see I try to concentrate my brush and uh, where it's going uh, really con again concentrating on the top of the coupler here like this. So now I'm going to switch and get a little earth brown now and again just start hitting the tops of this walkway here. So what I'm going to do now, uh, I've kind of saved this for last, 
is I'm going to do the kick up on the ends. And this is one of the most important parts to doing these cars because the kick up has to be there to look realistic. So we're going to go ahead and start doing that now. Alright, so the kick up for the ends is going to be primarily earth brown acrylic, which I'm using directly from the cap. And again, I'm using my fine tip brush. And what I'm going to do is align the trucks to exact position here. What I'm going to do is just start at the bottom with a good application of the paint. Remember, it's going to be a much darker color at the very bottom because that's where the majority of the spray is going to be starting from. But as you can see, you just start slowly kind of working it up like this. And then you can start forming the line itself like this by going up. And like again, make sure it's concentrated pretty heavy at the bottom. And then kind of lighten it out and fan it out as it gets to the top here. Just like this. Now, I'm going to kind of try to fan it at the bottom here just a little bit more. Like this. See how good that's starting to look? And I'm going to end up uh, subsequently falling behind with some chalk pastels and going over all these again. And now I'm going to do the other one. And again, pretty much exactly the same way. Build up the paint at the bottom. Focus on that first. Start building up a spray pattern like this. And then up like this. Alright, so I've applied the chalk pistols to the ends, so now what I'm going to do at this point, now that we got the car body weathering done, I'm going to go ahead and remove these masks to reveal nice clean stenciling underneath, as you'll see. So there's a sulfur logo, the graphic rather. Oops. It's looking good. And one more. I need to get my hand in the way here real quick. Sorry guys. Just get under there. And start peeling it off. Alright, so I want to go back to the photo of the car itself here again real quick. And I want you to take note of the little tag here. That's at the very bottom of the car. You can see the, the uh, three oak and I'm going to try to add that to my model of the car here. So as you can see, I have it on the correct side. And I'm just going to position it where it is in the prototype. And I'm going to use a fine tip Sharpie to do this. So I'm going to make sure the tip's clean first. Test it on a piece of paper. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this little piece of graffiti to the bottom here. Just like that. Okay, so now fun comes the fun part. What we're going to do is add the safety striping to this model. Uh, what I have here is a roll of Western Safety Reflective Safety Tape. And this is what I use for all my, uh, obviously, reflective uh, safety striping on my cars because this is actually reflective. So there's the information there if you guys want to get some yourself. It's a really good product. It's very thin, as you can see. Easy to cut, easy to work with. Uh, a lot of really really like it. Basically what you do is you cut out a strip of all yellow material here. You lay it out flat and then um, I always keep I'm actually going to set this straight edge aside for a quick I always keep a little piece of scrap material at the bottom here as a guide to know how much I have to cut. This is the exact, uh, exact scale thickness that I need and this is what we're going to go for here with our band. So basically what I'm going to do again is lay it flat on the ground, or the uh, cutting pad here. I'm going to take my metal straight edge, preferably a metal straight edge here because you want the strip to be nice and clean. You don't want a rough cut on this because it will be noticeable on your strips if it's a rough cut. So, And uh, I've went ahead and switched to a brand new number two X-Acto blade on my knife here. Uh, that way we get a nice clean cut here. And now we're just going to make sure everything's lined up. 
Again, using this uh, scrap piece of material here as a gauge, we're going to set it aside, and now we're going to cut strips out. And it'll take two of these strips uh, to do this one model. So we're going to go ahead and cut the other one out. Hold her down. And uh, this part here came out a little rough, but that's alright. Really, I only need about probably this much right here anyways. Now, I want to show you something else that I've done ahead of time on this uh, piece of backing paper. You'll notice, if you can, it might be a little hard to see. I'll try to zoom in here so you can see it. But if you can, look at these little indentations here. What I do is, again, saving the scrap piece of material too at the same time, I always cut these strips of tape and it leaves the little indentations and I purposely try to put a little force in there that way I have these little strips as a guide honestly this really makes a world of difference cutting these strips that way they all are uniform and they're exactly the same on each model they're not just you're not just guesstimating the size per car because then you'll get variations in the size of the stripe in which I, I don't find very prototypical so this really helps so these are the actual again the correct size for the stripes that's a prototypical size and it works very well for these models. So now what we're going to do so I'm going to zoom this out here, is we're going to cut little strips of tape based on these lines. So I'm going to make one cut I'm going to make two cuts and then another and so on to make these large bands Oops, picked up my wrong, uh, the wrong piece there. We don't need it now anyways, we made the stripes or the right size. So, then basically what you do, after you've cut them out, is you can take these strips, which you've already cut out, and simply apply them to the model. Alright, so now that we got the strips cut out, now comes the fun part. We're going to go ahead and apply them to the model, and I'm just going to use my prototype photos here, again, to refer and help me, basically to guide me on where these stripes go, which I'm going to position it about right here. Something like this. And the nice thing about this tape is it uh, has a self-adhesive backing, so it's very easy uh, to uh, apply to the sides of the car. Even with this weathering powder on there, uh, they stick real well, and they don't come off is the even better thing. Put a stripe there. One right here. Move it down a little bit. So you guys can see, of course. Then we have... If I can actually get it, there we go. One right here. A little lower, there we go. One right there. So the last thing we got to do to this car is add the little patches where the old number used to be positioned, which was right above here. So to do this, I just uh, made up a little batch of paint uh, by mixing some um, flat gray with a little earth brown uh, to make the certain color that I need. And I'm just going to take a fine brush and just make a little square of paint right up here. Doesn't have to be perfect again. The patch itself isn't perfect anyways to begin with. Yeah, it's pretty rough. All right, so one more time, we'll look at the uh, the prototype car. Get a good look at it. All right, now we can look at the model of TCPX 742. As you can see, we got the grime bands or the filled in panel lines there. Freshly applied stenciling, just like on the real car. You get the rust streaks, the safety striping, and the tag right there. And then you get the safety striping, the rust at the top, the uh, rust spots, and then the tag. 
So there's the real car. And there's the model. Alright guys, so that pretty much wraps this uh, how-to video up. I hope this was uh, very helpful to you. I hope this was thought-provoking on uh, learning some of these new techniques. Like I said, a car like this is a prime example of really the end results of what happens when you mix certain techniques together to create one finished model like this. And uh, I never get tired of seeing these finished cars and how they look. Uh, once you combine all these techniques to make one model, it's just amazing to see these things uh, come to life like this. So I hope this video was encouraging to you guys. I hope you guys learned a few techniques. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can contact me on Facebook. You can look up my Facebook page, Dan's Custom Trains. Daniel Arnold. Uh, you can, uh, of course, if you have any other questions and you want to just leave them here on YouTube, you can do so. Just leave a comment and I'll do my best to reply to them. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for more uh, upcoming how-to videos on certain weathering projects like this. Uh, this pretty much will cover uh, tank cars for now. Uh, hopefully in the next installment of this I can cover another uh, really, really cool covered hopper patch out uh, that I want to do. Uh, so I'll save that for next video. But uh, until next time, uh, thanks for watching as always, guys. Uh, stay tuned for more, and as always, take care. Thanks for watching.